In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a quiz in Moodle. Our focus is going to be on quizzes that are less interested in testing student knowledge and more interested in having students figure out for themselves what they know and don't know um, in the pedagogical parlance, a formative assessment as opposed to a summative assessment. Uh, basically, this just means creating a quiz with certain settings that allow them to see what they've got right and wrong right off the bat, perhaps allows them to retake the quiz multiple times, maybe with um, the ability to only retake the questions that they didn't get before, or perhaps uh, set up in such a way that um, they're getting different questions each time, you know, things of that nature. There's a lot of different options you can use when creating a quiz in Moodle. Uh, so I will show you where the settings are for all of those types of things. First thing we do is we turn our editing on, find the topic area in which we'd like to create the quiz, add an activity or resource, quiz, add. Some of these settings are the same regardless of whether you're using a quiz as an actual test or whether you're using it more as a learning experience. We do need to give it a name, of course. Um, timing. This is when is, does the quiz become available for students? When is it no longer available for them? Are they going to have a time limit in taking it? Generally speaking, if the purpose of the quiz is to allow them to practice, to drill, to learn as they go, um, time limits are probably not particularly useful under that uh, circumstance. Um, opening and closing the quiz really just has to do with managing the process, uh, allowing them to um, begin at a certain time and end at a certain time. However, if you do choose to close the quiz, you'll want to make sure that your review options reflect that so that they still have access to look at how they did, answers to questions, things like that. One of the primary purposes of a quiz that's um, less designed at testing their knowledge and more designed at allowing them to self-test uh, is their ability to see uh, what they've gotten right and wrong and your, and your attempt to control um, you know, whether whether you're letting them see the, the correct answers or not, or whether you're making them wait on that, you know, a variety of, of options there. And a lot of that is controlled through the combination of timing and review options. Grade simply determines whether this is going to be going into the gradebook or not. If it is meant to be a quiz that is ungraded because it's more like a practice, you'll come to grade category, I mean, you'll come to... Oh, no, my apologies. No matter what, it's going to have to be in the gradebook. However, in the gradebook, you can set it to be worth 0%, uh, essentially to have no weight in the ultimate uh, calculations of the course grade. And that's, again, going to be my suggestion if the purpose of the quiz is the student learning. Um, unlimited uh, attempts is probably going to be your best bet here. Uh, and if you're shooting uh, for them to reach the point of having a perfect score, leaving this at higher highest grade makes perfect sense. Layout, this is do you want all the questions on one page, or are you going to break that, break that up in some way? And you know, that's just going to depend on the quiz itself. Navigation method means can they move back and forth within the quiz, uh, or are they forced to move question to question to question without backtracking. I'm going to strongly suggest that you leave this as free and just have all the questions on one page. Question behavior. Um, if students will be taking the quiz more than once, I'm going to suggest that you leave that you set this so that um, the for multiple choice questions, the response options vary, so that would be a shuffling. Now, this only works if your response options don't include something that refers back to other ones. So an all of the above is not an uh, appropriate thing if you're shuffling. However, you can say something like all other answers, and then it doesn't matter what its position is within the sequence of response options. And then you can shuffle within questions. So that's an option for you. Um, you can do something called adaptive mode um, and immediate feedback. And what this does is provides them with information about whether or not those 
questions have been answered correctly before they've even completed the quiz, just as they're moving. And this might be appropriate if you've created a quiz in which the quiz itself is the method for introducing some materials or ideas for them so that they are kind of working through content, uh, providing them with correct answers as they go might make a lot of sense. To get some specific information about all of this, uh, like anything in Moodle in the settings, this will tell you exactly what it does. So students can interact with the questions in various ways. You may wish them to answer a question, answer each question, and then submit the entire quiz before anything's graded. Uh, that's deferred feedback. That's standard classic quiz approach. Um, you may wish for them to submit each question as they go to get immediate feedback. So that's the, um, and if they don't get it right immediately, they, they can try again. That's interactive with multiple tries. Those are the m most commonly used um, modes of behavior. Uh, and I just clicked on the more help in order to give me uh, a link to this document, which, which tells me any more. So there's adaptive mode, um, immediate feedback, uh, they only, they can't change it. Immediate feedback is they can't change it, but they know what they got right and wrong. Interactive with multiple tries means they can try again, over and over again. This is really good for drilling. Um, conditional questions, if using the interactive with multiple tries or immediate feedback behavior and within the navigation method set to free, it's possible to make the display of a question dependent on a previous question without being answered first, a uh, previous question being answered first. The question editing page will display padlock icons to the right. So this is again useful if you're creating a quiz whose purpose is, is providing the information for the students, which they are actually learning through the process because you can create um, essentially a flow of questions. So you got this question right, great, you're gonna move on to another question. You got this question wrong, huh. then you're going to move to a different question that um, essentially gets at the same concept maybe, but isn't an identical question, something like that. Uh, this is uh, a way of doing quizzes uh, that um, we'll need to explore more carefully if you're going to choose to do that one, um, because it doesn't do every single thing you might think of in a branching questionnaire, but it can do some uh, conditioning, so that's kind of nice. So that's going to be my suggestion, is if you're interested in making some changes in how questions behave, go to the help, read them carefully, kind of see which is your best bet. But again, in this case, the I mean, interactive with multiple tries is, is probably what you'll want to do if you're creating a drilling type where they just kind of do a question over and over until they get it right. Um, as opposed to deferred feedback, which you might want to do if you want them to work their way entirely through the quiz and then retake the entire quiz over and over, again, as a form of drilling or to help them self-test. Review options is what are students allowed to see. So if you have set an open and close date, then you can have things that happen after the question, after the quiz is closed. If you have not set a close date uh, and time, then this is not an option for you. During the attempt, um, you'll need to, um, this, this happens if you have chosen the interactive or one of the other modes that allows them to get immediate feedback. Uh, so that will only happen then. Immediately after the attempt, this is, they've, they've hit submit and then they should, and then you want them to see what they got correct. Um, you have to click the attempt in order for some of these other grayed out ones to appear. You know, what did they do? Was it correct? This just means points. How many points do they get? If you had entered specific feedback or general feedback for questions, those can, can appear. What's the right answer? And did you enter any overall feedback? This feedback thing is important um, if you're creating a quiz, again, that's designed to help the student learn a concept or process. Um, providing some specific feedback related to wrong answers and right answers can be helpful with that. General feedback for the question as a whole might also be helpful. Later, while the quiz is still open, uh, is not that different than immediately after the attempt, but basically it's rather than everything popping up right then, they leave the quiz and then if they come back, this is what they will see. Um, I think generally, if you're talking about a quiz based, a quiz designed for learning purposes, you'll want to do it immediately after the attempt. Okay, appearance, ignore that. 
Okay, extra restrictions on attempts. Um, do you want to, the important thing here is, do you want them to be able to just go immediately from one attempt to the next, uh, or do you want a small delay? And that's, that's really all that is, and that might be of some use to you. These other things you can just ignore. Overall feedback, that's if you want to create some feedback based on their total score. This could be something as simple as, you didn't quite hit the 100%, keep trying, uh, you know, something like that. You can ignore the common module settings. Restrict access is if you want to uh, create some restrictions. Date's not necessary because this particular item, quizzes, has already has some date fields. Um, requiring students to achieve a specific grade. Uh, so that um, is something where um, they can't get into this quiz until they've made a specific grade on another quiz. That's nice if you are um, setting up some form of a long-term process with these quizzes in which they're, they're moving from quiz to quiz af after they've mastered one, they then have access to another. So those are all the settings that are going to be of use inside of a quiz. Uh, in the next video, we'll work on making the questions.